Welcome to another exciting episode of Cast with Big Boy Trev. My name is Big Boy Trev. My name is Murigi. And today we have an amazing show, including something from Tesla, the Cybertruck. He said much more, but first, let's check out the news. On to our first news item. Tesla have just unveiled its first fully electric pickup codename, the Cybertruck. Gosh, that thing looks like a wedge. <laughs> Mr. Murigi, what do you think about this truck? Well, I mean, it looks weird, but it's a reflection on the fact that when you have an electric engine, you don't have space for the engine in the front. You can do whatever you want. Yes. So he decided to do whatever he wanted. Just make the thing look as interesting as possible because for the US pickup market, it has to compete with the likes of the Ford F-150, yes. the Dodge Ram. It's entering something that's already a big market. He needed to make a splash. And that's exactly what he did. I think he's just decided to do something totally different from what we're used to, the traditional usual pickup design into this cheese wedge, for lack of a better word. <laughs> but the stats are amazing. 0 to 100, 4.3 seconds. You have three states of tune. You have one with the three motors, which is the most expensive one. Two motors and then one that will be the cheapest variant of this particular pickup. Now, something amazing, if you go to the Tesla website, it's actually doing pre-orders at, how much is it again? It's $100 to book a place to buy the car. He's hit 200,000 pre-orders in just three days. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. You can imagine the truck. Again, he said it's made out of very tough steel and he did an experiment which, sorry, failed on, on, on national TV. But again, it shows the way Elon Musk is thinking. He's thinking different. And I think that's the way the car business is going to be coming forward. We fly all the way to Los Angeles, America for this next news item. Nissan have just unveiled the brand new 2020 Sentra. Now, Sentra in Kenyan speak, or in this side of the world, is called the Sunny. Mr. Mirigi, Nissan Sunny, where do we start even? very deep history in this country it's that thing that used to look like a box i think that was the b10 yes uh if you didn't have it you know somebody you had Absolutely. It. or you were rolling it or you were taking somewhere it or you did something with that car that was part and parcel of the history of this country and like you were saying earlier it actually was made in thicker yes did you were the first people to actually assemble and sell it here in kenya it has a rich history almost like a 504 yeah and now this particular new model 2020 the vision that nissan has for the saloon What's the up and down of this particular Sentra? So immediately you're looking at the new Nissan V-Motive design. That's the same thing that they have in the Qashqai, yes. which should also be coming to Kenya soon. I think the 1.2, uh, if you're not wrong. Very nice looking thing. It is an international product. So it's going to come with a lot of technology, lots of safety and great comfort. And you can imagine being based on the CMF platform that's shared between Renault and Nissan to come with a sturdy chassis. And of course, it will come with that durability aspect of it that Renault and Nissan have cultivated within the CMF platform. They've extended it from the Duster to the Cash Guide to so many products. Yeah. So we can't wait to test it. And Kazi Big Boy Trevor also telling me that Nissan Kenya are actually having a demo sale. So if you're interested in any Nissan product, please visit Nissan Kenya and they'll give you all the details on what cars they have available on sale. On to our last news item, we're talking about the BMW and the X family. Now, local BMW franchise holder Inchcape had a ride and drive with customers last weekend and they had a lot of fun considering it was a rainy weekend. Mr. Mirigi, how many cars were present and how did they experience this car? Well, I mean, when you say the X range, you mean every single car they sell in the X range because, as you know, the compact SUV segment is one of the biggest in the market right now. So they had everything from the X1, the X2, the X3, the X4, the X5, the X6, and the big daddy of them all, the X7. Ish, X7, I can tell you for a fact, that thing is massive and actually shares a platform with the Rolls Royce Cullinan, which is also on a league on its own. I can tell you the quality of the materials used in the X7 is amazing. And of course, one thing I noticed, active voice cancellation when you're doing a walk around. Yeah. That thing is as quiet as a whisper. You get in, it isolates you completely from the world and you're able to feel free and relax in the X7. This and much more on Kazi Big Boy TV. We're going to do a review coming soon to a TV near yeah. you. Take a look at the cabin of the Range Rover Sport. I can tell you the way it's been designed, the way it sits, it has a different feel as compared to the full strength Range Rover. Now the seats are more inclined to go downwards because of its sporty heritage. And of course, you can feel like as if you're commanding 
a spaceship. I don't know how a spaceship is. Maybe we ask Star Wars, but this is how it feels. The highlight of this particular design, it is borrowed straight from the Range Rover Vela with the flash touch pro dual screen setup. Now it looks so sublime. Futuristic is the word I was looking for. On top, of course, you do have a setup where you have the navigation, radio, and Bluetooth. And of course, below here, you do have the ability to control all the vital setups. So you, you can adjust from terrain response to how the vehicle handles on and off-road. That gives you that ability to you know, flex the car's ability. Now, obviously, on the instrument being a where the driver is, this is where the, everything happens. So you can have a three-spoke steering wheel, of course, and you do have on the left and right, you have some tactile feel uh, buttons. So these tactile buttons are not the usual touch. It's tactile. It's, it's, it's like uses pressure to determine if you're pressing or not. So you do have volume and of course uh, you have your rocker controls and then you do have um, driver assist. So you do have blind spot assist, uh, cruise control and of course you can control the various aspects of the volume and audio depending on your taste and preference. Instrument binnacle, it is clear and precise. You do have quite a very sharp display i think this is a 10.1 inch display that gives you the full view of the vehicle you can actually use the navigation on the instrument binnacle and of course have the key vital elements including the tachometer speedometer temperature and the audio what's playing on the audio you can actually see by literally controlling it from here that's quite interesting and of course you do have this particular function that i want to show you again gesture feedback or gesture control so if you want to close the sunroof for example i just need to wave it like i want so like and voila it closes the sunroof quite easily and as it as we wait for it to close it allows you to explore the full potential of this particular car land rover have gone the whole hog to ensure that this car is as modern and as capable as possible and of course you do have a thumping audio system that i'll play just now our new talk show Harry, also from 13 May, Monday to Friday afternoons at 5.30 p.m. Of... That is Meridian Audio 19 speakers, 825 watts of thumping power. Let's move the back and see the quality of the Range Rover Sport. So, let's get inside the, the cabin, the back seat of the Range Rover Sport. It's got plenty of space of course it is sharing the same chassis as the full-on range Rover, but it's slightly shorter to allow you to have its sporting credentials so it's quite comfortable um you can adjust the seats based on the way you want and of course you do have in the middle if you don't have an extra passenger um you do have an armrest come cubby hole come drinks cabinet where you can actually place your drinks and have a good long journey the headrests are good and supportive there's plenty of headroom despite it having a sunroof and of course the legroom as well i'm a big boy and i'm quite tall but i feel very comfortable in this particular car one thing that i do like about this particular vehicle is the ability to control the different aspects of the audio system without stretching or stressing the people in front you can actually control this using the hdmi port and uh, you do have usb and two charging ports over here so you can literally control that and then you have also air vents So let's see how much it can carry and then we're going to drive this car and tell you how the capability of the Range Rover Sport is all about. Moving at the back, as you can see, the power tailgate works, um, courtesy of this particular Range Rover Sport. It has plenty of space. Guys, you can literally pack up your stuff. If you're going a long distance, you can actually carry about three to four suitcases without any issues. In case you want to just uh, create more room, you can actually press the buttons on the rear seats and it will automatically go down and create more space for you if in case you're carrying more luggage and then also you have easy access you can actually make this vehicle go down because it has air suspension so that you're able to load your luggages very easily without stressing or lifting hurting your back you know guys it's very important to have a good back if you know what i mean you can tie down your uh, goods your luggage using tie down hooks as you can see here there are plenty across spread across and of course you do have the ability to protect them with a tonneau cover over here so that prying eyes do not see what you're carrying could be anything could be bananas could be whatever that's it guys we need to now drive this particular car how good is it off-road how good is it on road and then we'll give you a value for money proposition with mr Amerigas. as we tell you all about the range rover spot courtesy of cars big boy trev let's go So 
hi guys and welcome to this episode of CBBT. We are here at the Frankfurt International Motor Show and we're going to get a small primer on the brand new operating system that you're going to find in all the new Mercedes vehicles, specifically in this one for the smaller ones, that's your A-Class, the C-Class and uh, the SUVs as well. Andre, if you can just take me through um, the changes that are there in the MBUX. Yep. Um, this is going to be on the smaller models that you said like uh, the A-Class, the C-Class, the EQC and the smaller SUVs, the compact SUVs. Like I'm seeing the GLB here that's going to come to yep. our market in time soon. So what are the differences between this new MBUX system and the old system that was yep. there in the previous cars? Yep. Well, but as you already said, um, we have launched the system around about one and a half year ago with okay. our A-Class and now it's available in our, our compact cars, okay. in the GLE, GLS, that means in our SUVs, yeah. And um, the main difference is that now we have in the central display, we have a touch screen, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was not available in the old one, we have the same screen, we have a widescreen cockpit with 12 inch, here we have the compact car version with 10.25 inch and here it's a touch screen, yeah, this is the main difference. Um, when you have a look on the system, uh, on the displays, and um, but there are many other things. Um, okay. Now you are sitting in the driver position, that means uh, you have the possibility to operate via the steering wheel to the instrument cluster with the left system, with the okay. left button, yeah, over there. That means you can adjust all the settings. For example, you have the speedometer, the navigation, and so on and then it's personalized in the instrument cluster. Yes. And with the right hand side, you can operate the central the display. Central display. Yeah. Okay. It's the same as you use the touch screen, yeah. It's the same logic. And the third one is that you have a touchpad. Yeah. And with the touchpad, you also can operate the system. Yeah. Okay. And the central display. I'm liking it because you can actually use all of these at the same time with both hands on the wheel, which is yeah. not something you see with a lot of vehicles. Exactly. So using now these buttons, I can change what's happening in the middle yeah. here. And then I can also navigate that system yeah. while everything is in my eye line. Yeah. yeah, I'm liking this so far because like um, in a lot of cars, this steering wheel usually blocks some information that yeah. you can see. But here it's very clear from my perspective. Yeah. I can see everything, interact with everything. Okay. And then there's, there's also content here that has to interact with the internet. Because I've seen now there's yeah. a navigation. Yeah. Um, and then there's this thing that you, you mentioned called Mercedes Me. So what is Mercedes Me? And yeah. how does it how does it work for us young guys? Yeah. You know, with our with our phones and our apps and stuff. Yeah. Mercedes Me is our ecosystem. That means um, with the Mercedes Me you can connect your car with the yeah with the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that we have the possibility to have some remote functions in your car. For example, remote uh, lock and unlock the door. Okay. But uh, regarding the uh, infotainment system here, you can see you have a connection um, to Mercedes Me. Yes. And uh, for example, you can use the speech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a natural language understanding here in this car. For example, um, in the old car, in the NTG 5.5, the E-Class, you need uh, special commands, yeah? You must learn them. And here, it's natural. You that just means speak normally. You speak normally, yeah? yeah. For example, uh, hey Mercedes, uh, call Robert, yeah? And then it's working, yeah? So oh, I can see. see. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Um, but we have no robot in the dress book, okay. but yeah. So okay. all, you, all you need to do is just say, hey Mercedes. Exactly. This okay. is our keyword. With hey Mercedes, you can start it. Uh, but also it's possible to start it via the, exactly the, the hard key. Yeah. Okay. Show me restaurants near me. Now I also have a very thick accent. Yeah. Ah, yeah. that I can see. Yeah, and now the, the, um, the good thing is here you uh, can see um, uh, because of Yelp, you can see which is a good restaurant, yeah? Yes. Yeah, you can see the results, okay. Okay, so you can actually see which restaurant, you can see the ah, the ratings and then you pick the one exactly. that you want and it will give you a map to there. And you can see here it's marked, we have the online results, yeah? Yeah. And if there's no online connection, you will get all these without the rating as an offline result, yeah? Okay. I've also noticed here in the music, Yeah. it looks like it's connected to Amazon. Exactly. So you, is, you can also now connect some of the, the streaming services. Exactly. This is um, available um, from next year. Yeah. Oh, from next year. From next year. Okay. Actually, it's here. It's a demo, um, but we want to show it to all our customers here. Yeah. Um, it's a full integration of Amazon Music. That means uh, you have a one-year flat rate, and uh, which is very nice. You have the possibility to. Um, just a second, you have all your playlists, stations, charts, and so on. Also available here in the car, you need no iPhone connection and so on. It's just in the car via the, uh, the built-in SIM card, yeah? 
and so yeah, it's working with the complete user interaction, also with the speech and so on. Yeah, and um, you have access to your playlist as I already said. Yeah. And okay, so you can just like like start listening to something in the car and then continue in the house. It should be able to just follow through yeah. what you've been playing, exactly. keep keep track of what you're listening to, exactly. give you su suggestions and the like. Yeah. Okay, this is very nice. So it's connecting to Yelp. It's, so this Mercedes me, you basically have to create like an account for yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so you had it here first, guys. Um, Amazon Music is coming to the Mercedes Benz on the MBUX. It's going to be available from next year. So this MBUX is going to be available in the A class, which is going to come to Kenya before the end of December. Should also be available in the C class that's being sold currently at DC Dobby. You heard it here first. Keep it locked to CBBT for the latest news on technology and information. So guys, it's a beautiful day and we are sampling uh, one of the most sought after SUVs in the country and probably in the world, the Range Rover Sport, Mr. Mirigi. Yes, sir. We have done quite a number of SUVs in Kenya. Yeah. Now, what do you think about this? Well, I mean, first of all, we are at a place that allows us to fully review this car and see uh -huh. what it's capable of. Of yes. course, now we are the Jaguar Brand Experience Center yes. in Lone Hill in Johannesburg. Uh -huh. And we are testing out this car's ability to do on-road stuff. Huh? Uh -huh. So basically now, um, the ability for it to, to accelerate, to see what it can do, to see the full extent of the power of this vehicle. But this one is really making me happy. The thing about this car specifically is that they've, ted, they've paid a lot of attention on the customization options. Yes. So this has the carbon package mm -hmm. and the black pack. And I think like if somebody is thinking about buying this in Nairobi, you need to think about the fact that there are so many grey imports you need to make sure your Range Rover stands aside from the park. Yes. So it's sitting down with the guys at Jaguar Land Rover and picking out the color you want, the interior you want, uh -huh. carbon fiber, whether you want wood, making the car your own. Because that, that's what it is about now, owning one of these vehicles. It's not, it's not a suit you pick off the rack. This is something that you get tailored for you specifically. Mm. And that goes down all the way until these, these driving modes. Because yes. right now we're in the comfort mode, we're taking it easy. Yes. We need you guys to be able to hear what you're saying right now. But with the touch of a button on this screen, and you said it's the dual screen yes. display, you can turn this thing into a monster. Speaking of that, I just lined up the vehicle on the runway. And I'm going to set it up now for track mode. Okay, so let's put it in here. And then let's sit on that. Hold on one sec. Uh, track mode. And it's trying to connect anyway done and then we are going to launch it so guys this particular car has a very many derivatives from a five liter v8 supercharged all the way to a two liter petrol hybrid now this particular that we're driving is a 4.4 liter tdv8 740 newton meters of torque and of course it has 250 kilowatts of power and then again it's now paired to an eight speed automatic with a transfer case and then you can also spe like you said specify it if you want either to have the full-on transfer case from Land Rover or you have an all-wheel drive system that makes it lighter and very agile. So we're going to do a launch right now and uh, we'll put on P, of course, on drive, we'll put it on sport and then uh, rev it. Off we go! Ah, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> and we're heading around 100 kilometers an hour. Whoa. Jesus Christ. Oh my God! <laughs> there's something. There's something about the amount of power this thing has. It's a 4.4 liter V8 diesel. Yes. So that grant that you that comes in, as in, I, you know, for a diesel sound, this good really is quite something. These guys really put a lot of effort into this, and to think that this is actually a very comfortable thing to drive on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes. I'm sitting now. I mean, we have very, very nice uh, leather seats over here. 14 way adjustable. There's a full uh, panoramic sunroof. We have dual tone leather in here. We have a fantastic meridian surround system. Yes. And 
the, basically this is a car I wouldn't mind getting stuck in traffic on in a daily basis because this feels like a VIP lounge. You know, it feels like we are we are we are, we are, we are resting and we are easy. And then uh, when the road clears up, yes, <laughs> it's hammer can... down, it's foot down. And <laughs> you remember, put your foot down and oh my god. And the... rem and remember, the fun of driving um, is now brought back with the Range Rover Swap because it's actually a Grand Tour. It's a full capable off-road on-road uh, Grand Tour. You able to drive this car comfortably. As you can see, we are very comfortable. We are equally, you know, uh, endowed men, and we enjoy our our, 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 our sizes and. That notwithstanding, the quality of the vehicle, the luxury of the vehicle, you feel so quiet, so pristine. You can drive this car like to Mombasa without stress. So guys, you've seen what the Range Rover Sport can do. It's both capable on and off-road. Question is, can it surpass its rivals? What are the key rivals, by the way? Of course, in the performance SUV space, you cannot talk about these cars without talking about the Porsche Cayenne and the BMW X5. Fantastic on tarmac on a track, but in Kenya, you need to consider off-road. I mean, it offers the best of both worlds. Guys, what do you think? Would you pick the Range Rover Sport over the X5 or the Porsche Cayenne? Send your comments on our social media handles the same below, and we'll get back to you with the poll results. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on Cars with Big Boy Trev. It's been an honor. I'm Big Boy Trev. I'm Rigi. Be safe and drive safe.